Let's put it up. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. <laughs> Uh-oh. Even today do I declare that I will restore double, double your former prosperity to you. Now we're going over the edge. Okay, now look. God promises us that if we will become prisoners of hope, You know what that means? I'm locked up in hope. I can't get away from it. I can't get out of it. Hope. 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 Everywhere I look, hope, hope, hope. When you do that, the devil does not know what to do to you. Now listen, the devil will attack us. He'll come against us. He'll come with negative thoughts and trying to tell us that <laughs> but 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 he can't get to us as long as we remain prisoners of hope. Amen. <laughs> you get up in the morning, the devil says, nothing good's gonna happen to you today. Come on. You've already been waiting 25 years, it ain't gonna change. Listen, I had migraine headaches 10 years. I don't have migraine headaches anymore. <laughs> you gotta keep hoping. Every day, you got to say, today could be my day. I'm expecting. You know, I have no interest at all in standing up here for an hour just trying to be a cheerleader. Yes, I can drive you into an emotion of excitement while you're here. That's not what I want for you. I want you to get a principle. I want you to get an understanding of something that you, this is something you can take home with you and when you know how to have this godly attitude and stay full of hope i am telling you there is no devil in hell that can defeat you i don't care what's going on in your family your finances yes that doesn't mean it's not going to hurt and be hard but when you say god i believe your word I believe it, and you need to say it out loud. I believe your word. I believe your promises, and I'm gonna keep believing, and keep believing, and keep believing, and keep believing. And when you do, the God of your hope will fill you with joy and peace. Well, hope is essential to enjoying life, but many people are in circumstances where it feels like there is no hope for them to ever have a better life. Nancy Alcorn of Mercy Multiplied joins me again today with more real life stories of triumph over depression and suicidal thoughts. You know, Nancy, it's uh, disturbing to me and I'm sure to you just how the rate of suicide has increased and especially among young people. And I think that the things that they deal with today are so much different than what I dealt with as a teenager and they're just, a lot of them are just very, very confused in addition to many of them being hurt. But you don't have to have been abused to have suicidal thoughts. It can just be what you feel like is a lifetime full of bad things happening to you. Is that right? That's absolutely right. And also you've got the cyberbullying and the things that get passed through social media that can be very devastating to a young person. In fact, I just read uh, yesterday that uh, this includes men and young men and young women between the ages of 15 to 25, that it is the second leading cause of death, suicide. Wow. Ages 15 to 25, that, that's just like unheard of to me. And so people get wounded through various reasons. It's not just sexual abuse, that's obviously a big one, but but there's so many more things that happen and, and uh, the, the things that get passed through telephones and text messages yeah. and online and just all those things. And it's just heart-wrenching and people don't realize how much 
a person can get wounded. I mean, we've even had girls come to Mercy with severe eating disorders that started simply because their fathers or one of their brothers or somebody mentioned, you, you're, you look like you're gaining a little bit of weight. Oh my God. I mean, that's how easy yeah. the enemy can take what words and, and wound people with them and then throw them into a complete yeah. state of hopelessness and worthlessness. You know, deep-rooted insecurity is very tormenting because you, you end up spending your life trying to compare yourself with other people and always be something that you're not. Insecurity is bad, but I can tell you something that's worse, and that's shame. Yes. Shame is even worse than guilt. It's one thing to feel guilty about something, but to feel shame is even a higher level of all this, these bad feelings about yourself. And I know for me, I was progressing along in my healing with God, which we've already established yesterday. It takes time for people not to yeah. give up or think it's going to be an overnight thing. And... Uh, I had never really heard of or dealt with shame, and I read a book that talked about how it's one thing to be ashamed of something you do or even like for me to be ashamed of what my dad was doing to me, but somewhere along the line I crossed over into being ashamed of myself mm. because he was doing it. Right. And so if you really dig into all those definitions, one of the definitions of shame is to be damned. Wow. And that means that you know, you're basically doomed to disappointment and you can never have a good life. So what do you know about shame from dealing with these girls? Well, you know, uh, when you were talking, one particular young woman came to mind. Uh, her name is Franny. And when Franny was six years old, she grew up idolizing her older brother. He was about five years older than her. And so she, when she was about six years old, he, he was her protector, he was her best friend, and at age six, he became, went from protector to predator, he started selling her to his friends. They would oh. come over to the house when her parents were at work. And he, so he did that for about five years. Then he turned her over to uh, uh, one of his friends who was a gang member in town, and then he took over from there. So this went on until she was like 17 years old. And she came in uh, after after multiple suicide attempts and not wanting to live, feeling like that she she felt like it was her fault. She felt like she was an object. She was she she was filled with shame, and similar to the way you described how you felt. And she came in the doors that way, and but she began to experience the love of God. She right. began to experience the reality of 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 the fact that it wasn't God's will that that happened to her that he wanted to lift the shame and guilt and condemnation off of her and give her a, a purpose and a reason to live. And it's a long story, but basically she went through our St. Louis home that, that Joyce Meyer Ministries helped provide for us like 13 years ago. She graduated from that home about six, seven years ago. And she immediately went to the St. Louis Dream Center, which you oversee, yeah. and did a two-year uh, job there with you guys working with young girls and yeah. God used her in great ways. And then she went on to Bethel School of Ministry where she is today. She is actually uh, in her third year there at Bethel School of Ministry. And her dream is to open a safe house for young kids who have been through what she went through as a little girl. Well, there's no better way to get the devil back for what he's done to you than to turn it around on him right. and go help people that are struggling with the same thing that you came out of. You know, we believe, because the Bible says, that God can work all things out for good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So if you love God and you want His will in your life and you're willing to let Him work in your life, you know, it says in Isaiah that he give, He'll give us beauty for ashes, but I always say you got to give up the ashes to get the beauty. Right. Which means, you know, you can't spend your life with a chip on your shoulder feeling sorry for yourself being mad at everybody. There are things that God requires us to do to be obedient to Him before the healing comes. Right. We don't just get healed without making any changes in our life. And everything that God asks us to do is always something that's going to be for our benefit. You know, I believe that being a prisoner of hope releases you from other prisons. The Apostle Paul was a prison of religion. 
If you read the New Testament, Paul now says, I, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I used to be a prisoner of negativity and doubt. I was a prison of my past. I was a prison of all the years of abuse that I had gone through. And I thought, nothing good can ever happen to me. And you're just making a mistake if you expect it to, because all you're going to get is disappointed. And now I am so full of hope and just expect God to do amazing. Every day I believe God for favor in my life. And I just wait to see how God shows up and shows out. Well, well, I wish I felt like that. Don't make me come down there and get you. Well, I, I just, yeah, be nice if we all had your life. Oh, you don't know nothing about my life. It, it would just be nice. Can I tell you something I didn't get from where I was to where I am by wishing? <laughs> what have you lost during all the years that you didn't know the truth of God's Word? How many years have you wasted have you lost your identity? Do you not know who you are in Christ? Do you spend your time feeling guilty and condemned and depressed and discouraged and downtrodden? Have you lost your confidence? Do you know who you are in Christ? Have you lost your friends, your job, your childhood, your mind? <laughs> My childhood was stolen from me. I never got to be a kid. It's tough when you don't ever get to be a kid. And I don't remember ever just being a happy, carefree. I never felt safe, ever. Never. Thank you. But you know what? I'm just having so much fun now that I can hardly stand myself. Woohoo! Now, you know what? Just about the time you start to think, well, you know what? What she's saying makes sense. You start to feel just a little bit of hope starting to bubble in there, then you might as well expect it. The devil is going to attack. And he comes in a different way than he did before. Oh. I got to fight the good fight of faith and I got to get my hope back because if I have my hope back. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <clears throat> Go away. <laughs> I want you to go home with one of these. Amen. If you need to make it your bathroom. <laughs> and when everything that you look at looks like destruction, you just go get in that bathroom, run the water, flush the toilet so you can hear the kids and say, I believe that God is going to do something amazing in my life. What would you say the girls who come to the home and they start to learn, what would you say are some of the top things that they really that it's harder for them to get through than maybe some other things? I would say definitely forgiveness, mm -hmm. especially the ones that have been violated in ways like you experienced as a child. But um, what, we, what we've learned is we have to help the girls understand what forgiveness is and what it isn't. It, it, right. it, it's not, a, first of all, forgiveness is not a feeling. If we wait, right. you know, till we feel like forgiven, we'll never forgive. Right. But we help them understand that it's, it's an act of obedience that, God said, because I have forgiven you, I want you to forgive others. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you're saying that what that person did to you was okay because it wasn't okay. Doesn't mean that you have to go be reconciled or put yourself in the same situation right. where you could be abused again. Right. But what it does mean is that God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to live in a prison of bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. And we make sure for example, that every girl that walks through all the doors of mercy around the world, that they hear your testimony, and we always have counselors in the room, and then we follow it with your teaching on forgiveness, because what the girls have told us over and over again 
if she can forgive that, then why, who am I to say that I can't forgive what right. has happened to me? And a lot of times pe the people have to know that to for forgive themselves. They're mad at God. They right. have to forgive God because they right. blamed him because right. it happened. But to realize that God actually loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for all of this yeah. so that you can be free. And once they get a revelation of of that, that that's a, I think that's one of the hardest things is just yeah. to work through that forgiveness and get to the place where you realize that, that I'm doing this by faith, not yeah. because I feel like it, but by faith. And uh, we tell the girls, if you have to grit your teeth and clench your fists and say, <laughs> I choose to forgive so-and-so, that's okay. And uh, I remember when I, yeah, as a young girl, when I was first learning about forgiveness, that was my first forgiveness prayer was with clenched fists and gritted yeah. teeth. And, and, and the person that was coaching me said, start praying for that person now that you have chosen by That's faith to key. forgive. And as I want you to know, within a week's time when I prayed, I started having, instead of being mad, I started having feelings of compassion mm -hmm. towards that individual. And it just absolutely blew me away.
I see her eyes and all I can find Is there someone else I can go? I need so hard to land on these rocks From these rocks and roads that are my name in Seeing red and gray and broken bones I hear your footsteps in the rain When the time makes me feel so sad and lonely and your smile makes us smile so sad and pain When it breaks, when your heart breaks and that heart shakes I just want you to feel my love bring We were meant to be together forever Even if there's nothing left that's true Listen to the flowers in the crowded rooms Among the meadows with the summer trees And those terror It's so hard to land on these roads Down these dark side roads That are my name in Seeing red and gray and broken bones I hear your footsteps in the rain When the time makes me feel so sad and lonely And your smile makes us smile so sad and pain When it breaks, when your heart breaks And that heart shakes I just want you to feel my love bring we want you to be together forever Even if there's nothing left that's true Listen to the flowers in the crowded rooms Among the meadows with the summer trees And those carrot eyes hiding beneath the trees Where innocence has left us behind Do we love all the
And I think that is a key to pray for that person. You know, it, the Lord really taught me that too. Like, I, I kept noticing that the same people would come up for prayer all the time at the end of services for forgiveness, you know, wanting to be able to forgive people. And I thought, I know they want to, so what's the deal? And, and the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, they're not doing what I tell them to. They're not. They're trying to pray this prayer of forgiveness, but they're not praying for the person who hurt them. And not only that, the Bible says that if you have an opportunity to bless them, you need to do that too. And boy, that's a real fist clincher yes. to go be good to somebody who has mistreated you. But I know it works because God gave me the grace to do it with my dad and I believe that he's in heaven today because of that. And it's if you, re if you remember that hurting people hurt people. I don't most of the people that hurt the people that are watching today or the girls that have been through your home, they had something wrong in their life. It may not always be the case, but it almost always is the case that something happened to them that caused them to be that way. And so it's, it's much easier if you remember those things. Right, it sure is. And uh, just like, you know, you said hurt people hurt people. And what we like to say at Mercy is free people, free people. <laughs> yeah. And because we want to be conduits of freedom, we want to be able to experience that so that we can share that same freedom right. with other people. I love Romans 12, 21. We overcome evil with good. Yes. To me, that's one of the most important scriptures in the Bible. How, how do you overcome the evil that's been done to you? You do it by being good to other people because when the enemy hurts us, he wants us to be full of hatred and bitterness and resentment, full of self-pity, feel like everybody owes us something. And all of those are the opposite of what, what God offers us. And people think that they can't do the right thing if they don't feel right about it. Right. But I've learned that when I do what's right when it doesn't feel right, that's when I'm growing right. spiritually. And so you can do what God tells you to, whether you feel like it or not. Isaiah 61, 7. Oh, my gosh, this kept me going for years when I just had so much pain in my soul trying to get over the abuse that I went through, trying to learn how to be a submissive wife, trying to learn how to be nice. Oh, my gosh. And I'd go back to Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of your farmer shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. That means reward. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Now watch this. It doesn't say, and when they finally go to heaven, they'll be blessed. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. <laughs> what they forfeited and everlasting joy I know some of you have been sad some of you came to this conference saying God I gotta have a breakthrough you gotta speak something to me I need a word this is your word I'm telling you that every person can take this this is your word from God and anybody else that ever comes to you that needs help this can be their word from God there is nothing negative about our God everything he says is hopeful it's full of faith it's full of confidence you are no you are not the tail end of anything it's not too late for you God's got a good plan for your life and it's never too late to begin again double
See, you just don't understand and there's no way that I could ever make you understand what God has done for me. And you say, well, that must be nice for you. Well, see, that's just that attitude I'm trying to get rid of right there. <laughs> that's it right there. We just hit it on the head. Well, that must be nice for you. I'm glad that you're so blessed. <laughs> Caught you, didn't I? No, you know what you need to say? If God will do it for one person, he'll do it for me. I'm a whosoever. And God is no respecter of persons. When you see somebody else with victory, don't be resentful and jealous. Let it be an encouragement to you that if God can do it for them, God can do it for you. I don't even know how to talk about the changes in my life. But everything that I'm telling you guys that you need to do by the grace and the mercy of God, I had to do it. I didn't just get it sitting around wishing. You have to fight the good fight of faith. When those negative thoughts come and the doubt and the unbelief and the selfishness and the self-centeredness and the weariness and the tiredness, but you can't let the feelings and the negative days begin to determine your life. You have to get back into your prison of hope and you have to say, I don't care what I feel like. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care how long I have to wait. I know what God wants me to do and I am gonna do it and 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 do it until I drive the devil crazy. Come on, let's just give the devil a nervous breakdown instead of letting him give us one. I want to be the kind of woman when my feet hit the floor in the morning, hell says, oh, she's up again. Prisoners of hope. A little bit more about shame and the love of God. You know, it's occurred to me several times during these two days worth of programming that so many people think they've tried God and haven't gotten the help they need, but they've really just tried going to church. And of course, we both believe that people should get plugged into a good church so they have a, a church family. But Jesus didn't die so we could join a church and have a religion. He died so we could have a relationship with Jesus. And just as we close, because we don't have a lot of time left, Talk to us a little bit about that, how precious that relationship is to know that you have somebody with you all the time that loves you and wants to help you. It's so precious because, you know, the, the Bible tells us that he, nev he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And that uh, I love what Psalm 103 says, he has not dealt with us after our sin, nor has he rewarded us according to our iniquity. So we, when we... Uh, help uh, learn that for ourselves and teach it to other people, uh, then that relationship begins to solidify because you know that God is, is He's not a, a loving you conditionally like people do. He's loving you unconditionally. No matter what you've done, no matter who you've done it with, no matter what's been done to you, He loves you so much. And and you, we begin to pra basically teach a, a, a uh, young women to practice the presence of God, to, yeah. to, to be consciously aware that he's with you when right. you go shopping, when you're taking yeah. a shower, when you're eating with your friends, whatever you're doing, right. he's with you and he loves you and he, he wants to fellowship with you. And then he becomes like a real person and they start experiencing that love and that peace and that right. joy. And then it, it moves out of this, well, I just need to go to church yeah. uh, into a living, loving relationship where they feel accepted at all times, no matter what. And you want to go to church because you want to hang out sure. with those kind of people. And so I really encourage people too along the same lines that, you know, I heard something that is a good thing to leave people with. And that is, is that God is never more than one thought away. It's excellent. So all you really have to do to experience the presence of God is just to think about him and sometimes I'll encourage people just three or four times a day just stop and say God is here with me right now say it out loud God is here with me right now it it brings it more into our conscious awareness and boy understanding that God loved me it, it didn't happen overnight and I mean I had to confess that out of my mouth 
over and over and over declaring God loves me. Sometimes I would go look at myself in a full length mirror and point at myself and say, God loves you. It takes a while when you have felt so hated and despised and so full of shame mm -hmm. to begin to believe that. But if, if God who is perfect can love me, right. then surely I can begin to love me too. And as soon as you start accepting yourself and loving yourself, then you can begin to love other people. Well, Nancy, we thank you for being with us today and uh, we really appreciate you and all the work that, that you're doing. And uh, God gives us all a little bit something different to do, but together we can all get it done. So yes. thank you. Well, today we're offering a free booklet or you can get it on download titled Overcoming Depression. Contact us, the information that's at the bottom of your screen and take advantage of this offer for you or someone you know that needs this resource. Also, check out this webpage for individuals struggling with suicidal thoughts. There's contact information provided for you to get the help you need and testimonials to show you that hope is real. It works and changes your life. Remember that where you are right now is not where you have to stay. God bless you. Well, emotional healing doesn't just happen overnight. It's a day-by-day -day process, and time in God's Word is a key. I want to help you in your journey with my new Healing the Soul of a Woman devotional. It is possible to break free from your pain, and you don't have to go through it alone. My 90-day devotional equips you with scriptures that will help you walk this path to freedom. Now available wherever books are sold, or order your copy today at JoyceMeyer.org. So the Bible is God's manual to help us navigate life. But life often gets in the way of knowing the Bible, finding the time, knowing where to begin, and discovering what this all means to you. We understand, and we'd like to help. At JoyceMeyer.org study, you'll find free resources to help you get more out of the Bible. Whether you're a new Christian or have been walking with Christ for years, so jump in today. The Word. It's free, it's mobile, and it's tailored for you at JoyceMeyer.org. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org.